Awesome. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another awesome episode of Geek Vibes Live Interview. I'm your host, Tia, and I have with me today the amazing Kristen Veganos. How are you? Hi, Tia. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. I am so happy that we could make this work and that, um, you know, where are you, by the way, traveling today? I know that you said you're traveling at some point today. Yeah, so I'm actually from, or I live now in Los Angeles, and so I'm traveling back to there, but I'm actually in Kansas City right now where we shot I Am Lisa to do, um, to record commentary for the Blu-ray. Oh, that's so wonderful. Okay, so yeah. how's that going? It's been great, yeah. So we just rewatched the movie last night, Eric Winkler, the writer, Patrick Ray, the director, and I, we watched it, and we just did like a, a commentary track that'll come on the uh the Blu-ray with the movie when you buy the DVD. And um, it was really fun. We also recorded some uh, short interviews for a special feature that'll be on there, which is with Jake Jackson, our special effects makeup artist. So fans who you know buy the disc will be able to see um, some extra behind the scenes info on how all those prosthetics and all that were applied and all the fun deaths in the movie. <laughs> it's always kind of um, strange to uh, constitute as fun deaths, but it's like we do really love seeing things like that in movies. And so you star in the horror film I Am Lisa, which actually just released on theater in theaters I saw October 9th. Um, how has the reception been? Um, for me, like in New York, theaters haven't opened just yet. So how has the reception been with it hitting theaters during a pandemic? Yeah, so it's been interesting premiering a movie at this time, for sure. Um, we had our our world premiere, I guess, through um, Fright Fest in London, which was all virtual this year. So that was really exciting. Um, and then we did a local premiere here in Kansas City for everybody who worked on the film and for a bunch of local audience um, at a drive through which was really awesome. And so our <laughs> theatrical release right now is mainly drive throughs because they're all that's open. Um, on October 23rd, the film will be available. It'll be opening at the Lemley Theaters in Los Angeles on their virtual cinema. So we'll be screening in all the ways that theaters are accommodating. Um, and I know they did a, another local showing actually in a theater here in Kansas City this week. But um, in-person movie theaters, uh, we're, we're just waiting and praying that they come back soon. But drive-ins have been lovely, and we're going to definitely try and do some more of those across the country. Uh, it's a perfect drive-in movie, I have to say. <laughs> it's just everything you want out of a film in that setting. So um, our, our local Kansas City premiere was awesome, and, and we had like a great turnout. Uh, they told us more than the <laughs> Avengers screening the week before, which we're like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> so we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have to make it work during these crazy times, and it seems like that's what's happening. Um, I feel like a horror movie during a drive-in is great. You really get into the uh, the mood there. When did you guys film I Am Lisa? I mean, this was obviously probably way before all of this uh, pandemonium. Yeah, totally. It was. It was a totally other time. <laughs> we filmed it in July of 2019. So um, it's actually been crazy fast how, how quickly the turnaround is that we're already here premiering. But um, yeah, last summer. I was going to say, uh, normally when I speak with uh, actors or actresses, they've filmed it maybe two years ago, three years ago. So that's a nice turnout there. Mm -hmm. um, and you said that you were just in, uh, you know, filming for commentary for the blu-ray when does that come out so that i believe if i'm not mistaken comes in january uh at the same time that the film will be available on streaming sites and on demand um amazon itunes voodoo fandango all that fun stuff um that'll all be available in january Okay, great. Awesome. And so you're, as I mentioned before, a star of I Am Lisa. Um, for those who, and you know, I just got a chance to watch the trailer, which looks great, by the way. Um, but for those who may have not even gotten a chance to see the trailer, can you describe your character as well as the movie itself? Sure. Yeah. So I Am Lisa is a, a revenge film and a werewolf. A werewolf. So basically, Lisa lives in this uh, small town where the local police are super corrupt and just not the people you want protecting and serving. And so she gets into sort of a, an issue with them, um, goes through some abuse from them, and is left for dead in the woods. And instead of dying, 
is bitten by a wolf and slowly figures out a way to come to terms with her transformation and avenge her abuse. When I saw the trailer and I was so shocked of how uh, mean that um, I guess she was the sheriff, how she was being to your character. It was like, oh gosh. And that enough seems so traumatic. And then for you to add in the supernatural aspect in there, um, how did you kind of get in tune with your character? Yeah, so um, it's so funny because, as you mentioned, everybody, most of the characters, have, I just have such a bad relationship with them in the <laughs> film, Lisa does, but, um, but all the actors were really, really lovely and amazing and great people that I always felt safe and comfortable with. We, you know, we always felt like we, we knew what was coming next and, and, and did with each other, so that was really helped. Um, and um, in terms of getting in character with Lisa, I, I had a few things that I did. First off, I watched um, kind of a homework list of similar movies um, that Eric and Patrick gave me before shooting because I'm not a huge, uh, I don't watch a ton of horror movies actually. And I was very um, careful that I wanted to know exactly the tone we were going for and the style and see comparable films and things we would get compared to. And so I did a lot of uh, research in that vein. And then I also had um, a lot of music, which helped me for Lisa. Um, Eric would always send me kind of bands and songs and she wears a lot of like band t-shirts and things in the film. So I got into her kind of creative brain in that way. And I, she's, she's definitely the type to just like, you know, as you see her in the beginning, she's got her beanie and her glasses. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, her headphones are under there all the time. And she's just <laughs> kind of in her own world and, and pretty content um, just with herself. And, and she doesn't need much. She's definitely an introvert until she's kind of forced out of it into the world. Um, so a lot of just getting into her head and, and listening to music that she would like. And, um, uh, and, and that was one of, the, one of the big ways that I got into character with her as well. I would imagine also, um, whenever you put on the makeup, that also helps. Um, you had briefly talked about the makeup before. How long was that process to transform into uh, when you're in this werewolf sort of uh, state? Yeah, sure. So Lisa's transformation in the film is pretty gradual. The first time you see her with any sort of affectation, she just has um, contact lenses. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't wear glasses or contacts or anything, so I was pretty uh, scared of them at first, to be <laughs> honest. I was like, you're not going to be able to get them in. I told my makeup artist, I was like, you're going to have to pry my eyes open, and they did. It was a two-person job. But um, we got much better at it and quicker at it as the film went on. And then um, you add on the uh, nails and the fangs and she, you see her like that for a while. And that too, we got really good at, we got really quick at applying it. I mean, by the last day we were doing it, that whole thing was probably under 10 minutes. And then um, when her, she's in her final transformation, uh, she's got some prosthetics um, here and here. And those, the full transformation took about an hour and a half. Okay, wow. But it was really great because the prosthetics and the effects just look so good. And I was going about it on the special feature with Kate Jackson, but they look so good. Um, they're so secure that uh, as soon as I looked in the mirror with any of them on, I mean, it was just like half the work was done for me. You know, it's, it's pretty crazy to just see yourself like that. You suddenly feel stronger and empowered and kind of ready to go and you can't really ignore it and just kind of sit down, you know, with your <laughs> nails and fangs. So. Awesome. I love that. So would you say, so obviously I wear glasses and for the most part, I do wear my contacts. I just didn't today. And I apologize about that for not getting done up because you look gorgeous. Um, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> but everyone tells me that who doesn't wear contacts, how difficult it would be. But now do you feel like you're an expert? So the next role that asks for you to wear contacts, you're like, I'm good now. <laughs> oh my God. I would love to say so. If they will apply them for me, I'm good. I can't do it myself <laughs> still. No way am I getting up in there. But if you hold my eyes open and do it for me, then you're good. <laughs> and um, so you had mentioned that you're not really into horror films like that, but you had, say, done your homework to really get into the feel. If you could, off the top of your head, what would you compare I Am Lisa to in the horror movie genre? Because there's so many t sort of horror movies, slasher, the, uh, the single camera ones, like just so many. So what would you kind of akin I Am Lisa to? Yeah, so one of the films that was on that Eric 
uh, recommended I watch before we started filming was um, called Ginger Snaps. And okay. uh, I've been asked about it a couple times actually since filming the movie, but um, I, I did find a lot of comparisons in that one in that it's like the werewolf transformation is in tune with like this young girl's kind of coming of age and discovering herself and her ability and, and all that. And I would think the main difference between the two that I drew was that in Ginger Snaps, the character is pretty willing and excited um, by the transformation and by this new developed persona of hers, whereas Lisa really struggles with it and would, would ra way rather not, you know, deal with it um, and grapples with kind of losing herself and, and um, what she's going to become and all that. But um, in terms of the, the genre and how it's perceived and some of the tropes, I got a lot from that movie. got a lot of help from Ginger Snaps, yeah. Awesome. And did you think that there was any scene that was like really challenging to film? Uh, because it, uh, you know, it's a horror movie, so I would imagine so, but uh, was there? Yeah. So without giving like too much of a spoiler alert there, the, the scene that kind of kicks it all off, which I, I briefly mentioned the, the abuse that Lisa undergoes from the um, sheriff and her minions. Um, that scene I would say was probably the hardest to film just because it's brutal and there aren't even any special effects there or, you know, fun blood rigs and gags to distract from just the lack of humanity that's happening. <laughs> and, uh, but it's good because like I said, the cast is so lovely and everybody was so accommodating and sweet that, you know, the second we were done with the scene, everybody was hugging and it's okay, we're all okay, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> and, um, but uh, I, I know I remember like filming it, at, you know, I'm on the ground screaming and all that. And I know some of the crew members were like, I can't listen to this. Like they just like had to leave and walk out, you know, some of the ones who weren't necessary in that room. And it was a tiny room that we filmed it in. So I think that one is just the hardest on the heart, you know, and probably the hardest for people to watch too, because once everything gets started and Lisa starts, um, you know, taking control, even when she's not in control, but you root for her, but you don't root for them. So that's probably the hardest one to watch and to film. I always, it, you brought this up and I always wonder that with actors where it's like you in the scene, you obviously you're screaming and all of that. And then, you know, they yell cut and these are your just co-stars again. I mean, how is that transitioning into just uh, being friendly with your co-stars to, okay, well now I have to act as this person and you have to act as this person who's really hurting me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's different every time it's different with every relationship. And if, you know, we were lucky on Lisa to have a lot of time with each other and, and everybody except me and the cast is local. So they all knew each other already, um, which helps. And, and they were just like such a family welcoming me with open arms. So I was immediately close with everybody and felt safe. Like I said, um, that it was all just for the camera, of course. And, um, but it's, um, you know, sometimes you don't have that uh, that opportunity to get close. Sometimes you come onto a role in a day player and you're just introduced and there you go and it's harder and you're, you're strangers. But, you know, professionally, you, you just, you know when you can turn it off. You know, for instance, I, if, I, if the scene isn't over and we are going to go for another take or we are going to continue more coverage of the scene, I'm, I'm not going to want to snap out of it right away and start laughing and hugging everybody just because it's harder to go in and out of that sort of emotional depth. But um, as soon as the scene is over and we're done and, you know, it, then it's like, okay, that was, that was, we left that where it was and, and that's obviously not going to follow us anywhere. And um, I, I've been lucky that everybody I've worked with has been qu quite a pro. And, um, and the more friendly you are and the more you work it out and beforehand with the camera and everything, you don't leave room for unexpected, you know, stuff like that. So generally, if you're doing it all right, everybody feels safe, even though they're acting like they don't. Right. That No, that's great. Thank you for that. Um, do you see yourself doing roles like this in the future now that you have uh, done this sort of horror movie? Maybe you'll get more into them now. <laughs> we yeah, are in the season yeah. of Halloween. <laughs> right, right. Perfect timing. Well, I have to say it was fun to make it. I mean, I, I loved like working with all the effects and seeing how it's all done and um, playing somebody so like strong and empowered and, and kind of like visceral like that but um I know that uh you know in, in 
there's a possibility of uh, a Lisa sequel that if we do that, that will definitely be something I'm excited for. And then um, Patrick Ray, the director and I are actually have something else cooking in the works that would be of the same genre. So uh, that's also the blessing of working with good people and finding a good rhythm is you want to just keep doing it. Um, and that is his genre. I mean, he's like king of horror. So I would trust him again and easily work with him again. And, um, and yeah, it was so fun. I would, I would definitely take on another horror film. That's great. That's awesome to hear. We always love hearing that. And so you had said there's the possibility of uh, Elisa too, and there's um, something that you guys are cooking up. I was going to ask during this uh, pandemic time, have you like, have you been working on any projects or are there, is there anything on your plate uh, that you will be working on? Yeah, so I actually had two feature films, one in April and one in August that I was supposed to shoot um, as an actress, and, and those are postponed at the moment just for COVID safety reasons. Um, but I have been able to do a couple other short projects, and um, I, I also just um, produced a, a film um, called Bobcat Moretti, um, starring Vivica A. Fox, Taryn Manning, Matt Peters, um, and I've got a role in that as well, so that'll be coming out in about a, a year or two. Um, but uh, but yeah, I've been lucky. I've been able to work on a few things. A, a short film I just did called Anniversary just came out. Um, a film that I shot in March, a feature just before the pandemic, um, is actually premiering on Lifetime the day after Christmas. Um, that one's called Obsessed with the Babysitter. Uh, so... <laughs> That one's a thriller, if you can, you can imagine. I was going to um, say. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's also a dance film, which is a fun little combo. It's like step up meets thriller. It's buckle up. It's fun. Were you doing some dance moves in that? Oh, yeah, I had to learn to dance for that one. It was a wild, <laughs> wild ride. Yeah, four days of dance rehearsals. I'm like, okay, well, let's see how it goes. Yeah. But, um, but it was great. Um, so yeah, so I've been, I've been able to work on a few things actually, which has been really great. And uh, like I said, as soon as we get the word that it's safe, I'll have a couple other films lined up. So, um, so things are good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll keep our fingers crossed, hopefully that everything kind of moves into more of a normal situation again. Mm -hmm. um, in general, what have you been doing during this time to kind of keep yourself, uh, you know, busy? Have you been watching anything that uh, has been fun for you? Yeah, yeah. I've been watching a lot, reading a lot. I have a book club with some friends, which is oh, nice. <laughs> so sweet. But um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of that and writing actually more so than ever before. I've been working on some scripts. Um, Eric and I, the writer of I and Lisa, are actually working on something else that is not a horror film. Definitely not a drama, but we're working on a film called Sober Together. And um, I, I did the show that I have to say, if I want to, you know, like shout them out is uh, How to Get Away with Murder. I started oh. watching like two months ago and it has carried me through the pandemic. Like it's always interesting. Every episode leaves you wanting the next. When you're, I, I, I've said this about it. You can't text or play games on your phone while watching it, which is a testament to how good it is. It actually engages you that much, which is sadly uncommon these days so um that show helped a lot and uh yeah yeah i was um uh how to get away with murder is on my list m list of many things that I have to watch. Um, I would say uh, HBO's uh, Max's Raised by Wolves is one of those shows where like you can't text or anything. You have to have your eyes glued to the TV, but that's awesome. Um, I, as you said, uh, what you would call it, I am Lisa is out right now. Um, and October 23rd, I believe is when you said it will come to, theaters in uh, yeah, the California virtual cinema. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So everyone, please make sure that you check that out. Kristen, it has been really lovely speaking with you today. I really appreciate that we were able to connect with this and I'm super excited to watch I Am Lisa. It looks really great. Oh yeah, thanks to you. It's been really lovely. <laughs> thanks for having me. Thank you. And uh, everyone have a great rest of your day. <laughs>